Okay, so as a lot of you are aware, I love my Commodore. So, so far I've covered the Commodore 64 in multiple forms, multiple systems. I've covered the Commodore Plus 4, Commodore Amiga, and the list goes on. If you're a Commodore Free Club myself, you might also want to check out my classic gameplay videos and also modern C64 gameplays. But this tutorial, this setup guide is going to be focused on the Commodore 128. So this was released in 1985 and discontinued in 1989. And it was pretty much a bit stronger with memory than the Commodore 64. But you could enter the 128 mode and the C64 mode. So pretty much the same thing and it didn't quite take off as Commodore intended. So let's get you up and running with this. So the emulator I'm choosing for this one, which seems to be the best, is Vice. So Vice is obviously a versatile Commodore emulator which covers all the micro 8 bits of the Commodore systems. And we need to go to download. And the version I'm going to be downloading is the Vice 3.7 64-bit GTK3. Uh, don't download the SDL2, just focus on the GTK3s. So if you run a 32-bit CPU, download the 32-bit. If you're on a 64-bit, like myself, download the 64-bit GTK3. If this should get stuck, then just refresh the page and it will download again, and that can happen sometimes. So once our zipped file is downloaded, just drag this onto the desktop and we can close this down. I'm going to just extract this, so I use WinRAR and there's plenty of extraction tools out there on the market. 7-zip, uh, WinZip, I use WinRAR. We can now see this is extracted another folder which is of course our GTK3. So we can delete this one, what we just downloaded. And I'm going to just open this up and inside we have lots of different subfolders and a few files. The one we want to open up the Commodore 128 emulator is under the bin. So we just scroll down a little bit. We've got several different exe files. So of course versatility is what Vice does. So Vice will cover C64, 128, Commodore PET, Commodore Plus 4 and the Super CPU 64. But we're looking at Commodore 128 here, so just double left click on 128. And this is obviously now going to be opening up how a real Commodore 128 would have opened up once you powered it on back in the day. So you're going to want some games to run on this. So some games you're going to receive better performance than running on C64. And there isn't really a great deal of Commodore 128 exclusive games out there. There never really has been. But if you remember from back in the day, Commodore 64 games would have a slash on it saying 64 slash 128. So it's also compatible on the 128 model. So you'll get better performance. Okay, so let's load a game. So as you can see just here, I've created myself a 128 games folder. Inside this folder, I've got a pig quest, which is also compatible with the 128. And I've got the famous Kickstart 128, which was a exclusive to the 128 model. So let's try and run this. So if I just go to file and smart attach, from here, I need to navigate for this folder, which is on my desktop, which is desktop. And then from here, 128 games. And then I'm going to select or rather highlight Kickstart. And I'm just going to go down to attach it. So from here, we need to enter some commands like you would a real 128 or a Commodore 64. So load, quote mark, asterisk, quote mark, a one, which is now set to read and then press enter. So that's loaded in and all we got to do now to run this game is literally type in run and enter. And that's booted us straight into the game, which is very quick. So you're going to need to attach a controller to this. And what we're doing here is we go to joysticks, go to configure joysticks and under joystick one, select your controller, which is plugged in. I'm using my PS3, which comes up as Xbox 360 for Windows. Left click on that and we can now close this. And if you check this little joysticks out in the bottom here, we can now see my controller is being read is port one. So that's about it. So let's take a look at this game. So we're gonna start this game by pressing an F7. And my name is just Jamie, enter. Now, I've never played this game on a 120 model, so I can't really say if it's better performance than you would get out of a C64. But it's running, and it's a 128 game. 
So let's turn this into full screen. So if I double left click on the screen with my cursor, we're now in full screen mode. So uh, yeah, pretty much a phys physics style game before they become very really popular. So to exit the full screen, just double left click on it again. And if we go down to CRT just here, we can open up a range of options, what we can do with the screen so we can change the brightness the saturation, the gamma, and pretty much everything there. So we've even got scan line shader. So for those which likes that really retro scan light look, it's worth your while looking at the scan line shader option. So lots to look at just there. And if we go under mixer and check this, we can alter how the SID chip sounds. So for people which really likes the sound, the definition of certain SIDS noises, sounds it produces, options like this might be a benefit to you. And if we don't like the way what we've done with this, all we do is press reset and that's going to take us back to the default settings. And let's say you've got a cassette image which are known as .tap files. We're going to load this through Commodore 128. Let's see if this works. So file. And then from here, you can go to attach that set image. And then we look for where that .tap game is. In my case, it's on my desktop again. And I'm just going to select the game and I'm going to go to auto load. And from here, I'll just type in which I'd normally would on a real 128. Load. Press enter and it's asking you for press play on tape. So from here, we're just going to go down to our set controls and then start. And technically this should now load up your Commodore game, but obviously this is a C64 game and this one isn't going to load, but I thought I'd give it a try. So if you do come across a Commodore 128 game, this is the way to do it. And it actually looks like it's found it and I'm not in C64 mode. So of course .tap files are going to take a lot longer to run than the D64, which is disk images. So that's about it for the Commodore 128 through Vice Emulator. As always, I'm always uploading Commodore content. I love my Commodore machines. So if you've not yet liked and subscribed, please like and subscribe. And also remember to hit notifications. I'm also on Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram. So be sure to join me on any one of those social media platforms. But until next time, stay retro.